He dealt from desperation, and he shouldn't have been desperate. First of all, we're giving them billions of dollars in this deal, which we shouldn't have given. We should have kept the money. Second of all, we have four prisoners over there. We should have said, let the prisoners out. These people, they shouldn't be over there. You have one, one's in there because he's, because he's a Christian, he's a pastor. One's in there, a writer. I mean, they shouldn't be in prison. So he should have said, we're not doing anything, let him out. They would have let him out in two minutes. The Donald has a good point when it comes to American prisoners still being held by Iran. And there's a point floating in the political winds about Republicans needing to do everything but play it safe come this election cycle. Let us then unleash the political animal with the former Deputy Staff Secretary to President Bill Clinton and veteran Democratic strategist David Goodfriend, along with veteran political operative and former top aide at the Republican National Committee, Mike Shields. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Mike, let's go ahead and start with you. Look, Donald Trump may get a lot of people angry, but he's got a point here about the prison and whatever he's saying, it is resonating with people across America. So shouldn't we sort of at least get on the bandwagon a little bit about the prisoners here? It's a good point. Well, look, this is a terrible deal. I mean, the prisoners is, is, a, is, a, is a tragic part of this. And the idea that we would be negotiating with Iran on anything uh, is what I think has most Americans disturbed. And I think the, the real problem the president has now is He's got to get Democrats lined up to this. I mean, you had former uh, Senator Jim Webb this morning, who's, who's a, a future presidential candidate, uh, who's going to be, I think, hitting Hillary Clinton, who's been in full support of this of this deal. And this is partly her negotiation that, that's being completed by John Kerry, who's really uh, correctly pointed out that at the end of this deal, uh, Iranians still get to have a nuclear weapon. And so uh, that is deeply disturbing to most people in the country. And I think it's deeply d disturbing to a number of Democrats and this isn't over yet. The president's now going to have to go to Congress and get a bunch of Democrats on the Hill to vote for this terrible deal. And so, yeah, the, the hostages is one element of a much larger problem I think the president has with Congress and with Democrats on Congress right now. David, let's get to you with regard to Democrats as well. How can the Democrats stand behind this deal? When the president comes out and says, this deal is our best means of ensuring Iran does not get a nuclear weapon, quote unquote, that has been proven false by almost every military expert who knows anything about Iran, add the hostages to this, which weren't even included in this deal. There's so much here that simply doesn't pass the smell test, David. Well, I think all of us uh, have a heavy heart about this, whether we're in favor of the deal or not, because Iran uh, is a threat to world peace. And I think that the only argument that I think really prevails here, and it's really the best argument, is this. As in any negotiation, you have to ask yourself, where do we stand without a negotiated agreement? Where do we stand? And here's where we stand. Three months away from a nuclear Iran and zero support from the international community. Play this out, and this will take a little time, but it's worth focusing on. There really are only two options, a negotiated agreement or war. The American people, over 75% in poll after poll after poll, Democrats, Republicans, disfavor David, military hold, hold action. Hold on one in sec. I, I just have so to interrupt a minute here. And, and, but, but let me get to this when you say three months away from a nuclear device here. We still don't know where everything is. There's still a secret program there. Even if this deal hadn't been cut, it would still continue. It is still continuing. All we're doing is buying time here in some ways. But there are people who say that it continues in Iran no matter what the president has signed. Which brings me to the central question, which is neither a presidential candidate on the Republican side or a single Republican member of Congress, or for that matter, a single Democrat opposed to the deal, has offered the alternative, has offered the alternative. You can nitpick the deal and say we shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that. Are you willing to go forward without China, without Russia, without Europe? and basically sideline the United States and have the sanctions fall apart. If you're willing to do that, stand up publicly and say it, Donald Trump, or whoever you are, Republicans, okay. saying you're against this. Then let's go ahead and do this then. Mike, I turn it to you then. Are there Republicans out there? Should they be out there getting in front? Should they be more vocal about this? Is that a fair assumption here? Is that a fair charge? Well, I, think, I think what you heard from my, my, my Democratic friend here is exactly the paradox that a lot of Democrats on the Hill are facing, which is... They want to support their president. They want to put their partisan jersey on, but they feel very uneasy about this deal. And the case that they now have to go make to the American people is a really horrible deal negotiating with a really terrible sponsor of terror is better than no deal. 
And that is a really tough place for any Democrat, I think, to be. I don't, I don't envy him or any Democrats on the Hill who have to support the president to say, our, our options are either no deal or the really terrible one that we just negotiated with a terrorist state that's going to lead to some really bad consequences. So I think that you're going to hear a robust debate. Uh, we've got a lot of really, really great candidates running for president on the Republican side, and they're going to have a robust conversation about what to do with Iran. I can tell you that none of the Republican options that they will come up with are going to say at the end of any negotiation, when it's all said and done, we're just going to go ahead and admit that Iran's going to get a bomb. All right, I got and about a minute left here. Let me go ahead and break that up between the two yeah. of us. David, I have yeah. to move on. I got 20 seconds here, and I need to talk about Scott Walker very quickly here. People say that he is a bold, safe choice for the Republicans. Do you see him as bold and safe, or is he somebody who's eminently beatable by the left? I am born, raised, and educated in Wisconsin. My family still lives there, and I can tell you his approval ratings are now below Barack Obama's. He is a failed governor, and I would love to see him as the nominee. We will take him apart. Now, there you go. Mike Shields, Zimmer fighting words. Do you think those are fair? Well, look, I think he's taken on all comers. He's won uh, not only a re-election twice, but a third time when they... Every single penny of the union establishment came after Scott Walker, and he was able to beat them back. But look, he's one of many, many good candidates we have. There are plenty of Republicans that are running. We're now 14 deep, I think, governors, senators, people that are qualified. Scott Walker is a, is a very, very qualified and accomplished governor with the reforms he had in Wisconsin. And he joins our, in, a, in a wonderful field of Republicans where there's a lot of qualified people with go. accomplishments. So I'm really looking forward to this. Fear not, gentlemen. We will have plenty of time to get a lot of this in because we've got a long way to go. Mike Shields, David Goodfriend, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Stay with us on the fastest 60 Minutes in News.